here we are everybody college football week 10 now let's get started with a little bit of a monkey business yeah a monkey called pole assassin who belongs to a texas assistant coach why is his name pole assassin i have no idea but the, but the poor little monkey attacked a kid I, I, I do not know what in the world's going on with the story. I just know that there is a monkey called Pole Assassin in Attack the Kid. And there's a great edit of the Texas logo, by the way. A really great edit of that logo. Uh, it's the old logo, you know, the old Bebo logo, you know, not the generic. The, I guess, well, not generic. You know, you know, I wouldn't say Longhorn logo is generic or anything like that. I'm, talk, I'm just talking about the old one. The old Texas logo, you know, with Bebo having a whole face and everything like that, with the monkey's face on it instead, it's just absolutely hilarious. But yeah, yeah, that that's that's not that's nothing. That's nothing. Conference realignment is something though. The MAC may add Western Kentucky and Middle Tennessee this week. The ADs are in agreement. Presidents just need to get together and say, hey, let's do it. And this will make the Mac much easier, in fact. It'll make the Mac much easier for, you know, divisions and stuff like that. You know, because there is an Ohio team, I forget, it's either a Toledo, it's probably, I think it's Toledo that's in the West. Toledo's in the West when they should be in the East with the rest of the Ohio teams in Buffalo, but they're in the West with. Northern Illinois, Ball State, and the Mich and the directional Michigan schools, you know. So it is what it is there. But CUSA has effectively said we're gonna counter this offer with, you know, with our three remaining schools: Louisiana Tech, UTEP, and Florida International. With Liberty, who remember was not interested initially, you know, a couple weeks back when we. I think we first talked about, you know, this whole conference realignment thing. Liberty wasn't interested. They didn't want this. They didn't want to be in a conference, you know, that was, you know, dying. You know, that didn't have, you know, Old Dominion or Marshall or, you know, James Madison or anything like that. They didn't want or Charlotte too. You know, they didn't want a conference, you know, that didn't have, you know, those regional rivals, that those regional teams in there. But I think it's a prop up of money, you know, that a lot of people are speculating that Conference USA is trying to get Liberty to do, which is prop up a lot of money, because they can do that. But it just doesn't make a lot of sense. With Liberty having the schedules that they've had over the past few years where it's very favorable, they schedule just like Army, in all honesty. You know, Liberty only schedules like two or three Power 5 teams a year. It's a lot, a lot of group of five teams that are on their level, you know, and Liberty's just been dominating. Liberty's just been dominating the, those teams, except for a couple weeks ago when they lost to ULM as a huge favorite. And, you know, they had the success and stuff like that over the past couple years, so I don't understand this. They're, this conference would be dominated by Liberty in both football and basketball because they are a basketball team that plays pretty good in the A Sun. So it doesn't make a lot of sense. You know, Liberty wants an FBS conference, but I don't think it's like this. And then, you know, New Mexico State from the WAC. You know who else is in the WAC? The defending national champions, the number one team in the country currently in the FCS, Sam Houston State, who has a stadium that's definitely not ready, facilities that are definitely not ready, and also Jacksonville State from the A Sun, who, and remind, let, let's just remind everybody, the A Sun just got football back. They haven't even started conference play yet. They haven't even started becoming a football conference yet. You know, they're still waiting on you know getting everything together for Austin P to come in you know, in 2022. So why would Jacksonville State leave, you know, something that's solid in which, you know, the A-Sun would want to move up together because those teams could move up together. You know, again, you know, and all six of those teams have pretty passionate football fan bases, you know, in, you know, places that aren't, you know, really, you know, populated with fans of those specific teams, you know. I mean, that didn't make a lot of sense. But those, those 
I mean, those are rabid, rabid fan bases with the A Sun, you know? Despite the fact that they're in locations that, you know, I guess that's what I'm trying to say is that the, that these A Sun teams are in locations where, you know, college football has, you know, bigger FBS teams where they take up a lot of time. But but don't forget, don't, don't sleep on those A Sun teams. Do not sleep on them. So why would Jacksonville State take a ticket to a dying conference, to a conference that has no value anymore? Conference that can't even get, you know, a regular TV deal. I mean, we, I don't think anybody knew that we could elevate, you know, a game from e, from ESPN Plus and ESPN 3 all the way up to ESPN 2. But we'll talk about that game in a moment. So this doesn't make a lot of sense here. And Conference USA is still short one school. They need eight. You need eight schools. You know, you might have to do a waiver and stuff like that, you know, like like the WAC and the Big East did when the WAC was dying in football and the Big East was about to become the American. You know, you might have to do that. Do something. Because this isn't going to work here. I don't, I don't like this idea. I really don't. I think the CUSA should die. Florida International could just drop to FCS and become the 14th member in the A Sun or go independent along with UTEP and Louisiana Tech because I mean you know a lot of buy games could be had instead of you know Alabama pillaging to the FCS you know to get those FCS games you know or a lot of you know a lot of regional group of five opponents you know because there's teams that have schedules that still need to be filled out for 2022 and beyond yeah, I don't, I don't get it. I really don't get it. But anyway, college football playoff rankings, they're out. And number one is Georgia, number two is Alabama, number three is Michigan State, number four is Oregon, five, Ohio State, six, Cincinnati, seven is Michigan, eight is Oklahoma, nine, Wake Forest, ten, Notre Dame, 11, Oklahoma State, 12, Baylor, 13, Auburn, 14, A&M, well, Texas A&M Aggies, BYU is at 15, Ole Miss, 16, Mississippi State, 17, 18 is Kentucky, 19, NC State, 20, Minnesota, 21, Wisconsin, 22, Iowa, 23, Fresno State, 24, San Diego State, and 25 pit. Now there is a lot of things wrong with this poll here. You know, you know what the first thing is, right? Yeah, a group of five teams kind of don't get respected in this poll. You know, there's a lot of group of five teams that aren't in this poll that should be in this poll. You know, Louisiana is kind of understandable, along with Coastal Carolina. Coastal Carolina's schedule is that bad. Louisiana got thumped by Texas, but yet Louisiana's won seven straight. Coastal Carolina was ranked, you know, at the beginning of the year. Obviously, you know, the preseason polls don't matter now, and plus Coastal lost, you know, already. UTSA is another interesting case because they beat Memphis, who beat Mississippi State. They also beat Illinois, who beat Penn State. It doesn't make a lot of sense here. Houston and SMU are probably on purpose. They, pur I think the committee purposely, and a lot of people are going to say this too, that Houston and SMU were purposely not ranked by the committee because they want to devalue Cincinnati at some point. I think that's, I think that's what this is, because you know, man, San Diego State, Fresno State do have good wins against Pac-12, you know, and stuff like that. But Fresno State has lost to a 4-5 Hawaii team. And San Diego State, you know, just, you know, they don't have anything. We've been talking about San Diego State's defense and stuff like that for weeks. But they don't have anything aside from their defense. Like, this is a Georgia situation gone really, really bad with San Diego State. There's no reason to talk about San Diego State like that, you know. Um, another couple of admissions in her you know, from this poll are Arkansas, who beat Texas A&M. Yeah, 
Arkansas beat Texas a &M. You know, they did lose to Alabama and, you know, and Ole Miss and Georgia, but they beat A&M. Maybe, you know, maybe, maybe it's because, you know, Arkansas also has a win over Texas, and that doesn't mean anything at all. Penn State, too, has a win over Wisconsin, who is ranked for some reason. I don't know why. But again, you know, maybe it's the loss to Illinois, maybe it's the loss to Iowa, maybe it's the loss to Ohio State. So I don't know I don't know what this is. I don't know what this I don't know what the committee's thinking. Head to head does seem to matter to them though, so that's good. Bad losses, however, don't really matter, except in the case of Penn State, you know. And teams playing recently, that's the third thing I noticed. You know, how are teams playing recently? Because Oklahoma's down at number eight. Oklahoma's on bye this week, so there's no reason to talk about them. I, I don't I don't get it. I don't get it. You know, I don't get the polls, but I mean, you know, it is what it is. The polls are the polls. It's official now. We know who the top twenty five are for now in college football. Now the B now the BCS the old BCS the simulated rankings are doing a lot better job with this, in my opinion. You know, because I mean, you know, there, there's there's definitely you know teams like UTSA and SMU and Houston that are ranked, you know, in in the BCS simulated poll. But I mean, again, that poll doesn't matter. Nor does the AP or the coaches poll. You know, none of those matter. You know, there's no reason to get up. You know, and you know, try and take time out during the NFL games to see what in the world's wrong with the AP poll this week anymore. It's now Tuesdays. You know that we get to see what these polls really mean. So it's a bit crazy. Um, you know, with the whole thing being the way they are, I just, I just don't know. You know, man, I just don't know. I don't know. You know, with that, I just don't know with the polls. You know, for college football. So. Give me a minute. We'll talk about see, these, you know, these games, you know, for the week of week ten. Because unfortunately, you know, there was going to be a lot less. But now, since the committee has, you know, put these rankings out, there's a lot more games to talk about now. So as we get into the Saturday, you know, a big Saturday in college football. It may not look like the prettiest slate of games, but there are indeed six games that I have lined up here to talk about as the biggest games of the week. But let's go through all of the top 25 just to make sure. You know, Georgia, Missouri is the first one up. And Georgia, they are favored by a lot of points in this game. Missouri is trying to get, you know, their quarterback situation under control. And they... And Missouri has a bad running defense. I mean, we're talking, you know, they were able to barely squeak by Vanderbilt and stuff like that. But, you know, Missouri is Missouri. They haven't been really good in years. I mean, it seems like such a long time since 2013 and 14 when they were in the SEC championship at number five, you know. You know, could have went to the college football playoff, you know, you know, a couple years ago. Or almost, like, I mean, five plus years ago that Missouri go went to the CFP. Um, but Georgia should take care of business here. You know, they got to lean on the running game here again against Missouri. This shouldn't be too much of a problem as Missouri, again, trying to find, you know, quarterback situation, trying to find out what in the world they can do with, you know, what Eli Drinkwitz and company can do, you know, against this Georgia defense. But there's not a lot of teams that have been able to stop Georgia you know, this year, so we'll see what this is. First bolded game of this week, my first of my six picks for the week, or out of my six games of the week, is Ohio State-Nebraska, the big noon game, of course, and this is Scott Frost's final chance to make something of himself. You know, Nebraska's had a horrible season, the Buckeyes, they did not look great against Penn State, and they really haven't looked particularly great against good teams all year, you know. But, I mean, C.J. Stroud, Travion Henderson, and Chris Olave, they should get the ball rolling. They should get the ball rolling. But Nebraska's still tough. You still got Adrian Martinez. You know, I know a lot of people don't seem to like Adrian Martinez. I know a lot of people don't seem to like Scott Frost anymore. A lot of people are kind of apathetic. 
though, about the whole thing, but Nebraska has played, you know, things tough all year long. They've had some really, really close, really, really bad losses, you know, that have just been really, really close. You know, we're talking super close, and I think this might be another game where Nebraska could take, you know, another top team to the limit. And could Nebraska actually get one this time? I honestly don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what they could do. Next one up is a second bullet game here, and that is Wake Forest, the undefeated Wake Forest Demon Deacons and North Carolina. Now, North Carolina and Sam Howe and these Tar Heels do not have a good defense. Sam Hartman leads the Demon Deacons, and the Demon Deacons have consistently shown that they do not have a good defense. This game is going to have a lot of points to it. It's going to come down to the quarterbacks and the wide receivers for both of these teams. You know, Wake Forest has the better wide receivers that have emerged throughout the year. You know, like A.T. Perry. I mean, the, I mean, this Wake Forest unit has really emerged into its own. Do they solidify themselves as the number nine team in the country? Possibly even moving up some. You know, again, Wake Forest's schedule hasn't looked good this year. You know, again, the ACC is kind of down. But it seems like, you know, again, Wake Forest will be given opportunities if they continue to win one against NC State in a couple weeks and two, you know, against Pitt potentially in the ACC championship or Virginia. You know, uh, I'm not going to lie there. Virginia could also win the ACC Coastal, but we'll see how that goes, you know. Another game, I know some people have highlighted this is a big game with Liberty and Ole Miss, but I, I don't, I'm not really interested in this game. It, it is going to be, you know, one hell of a matchup, though. You know, I'll probably have this up if, you know, Wake Forest, North Carolina, or Ohio State, Nebraska gets really bad. And that is Matt Corral versus Malik Willis. Both these guys could be potential first-rounders. There is going to be no defense here at all. You know, you know, Liberty, they do have a loss to Syracuse, I believe, early in the season, if I'm not mistaken. And again, ULM, you know. That, that loss there just doesn't make any sense. And Ole Miss, you know, trying to recover. They're at number 16 right now. You know, they've had an interesting season so far. They do not have a defense. Auburn really, really kicked them in the teeth, you know, last week. I mean, this that game was not as close as people indicated. It was really Auburn running roughshod all over Ole Miss. So, Ole Miss and Liberty going to be one fun game here. It's going to be one really fun game. I'm uh, hoping a lot of people, you know, get to watch this game because, I mean, again, these two quarterbacks are on a roll, both of them. You know, both have, like, what, 30 touchdowns apiece to each of them? You know, and Corral's just looking to keep solidifying his case for the Heisman. Again, I, I really don't care for C.J. Stroud or Bryce Young right now. I mean, both these guys, <laughs> I mean, both those guys, you know, have played really well. But I think guys like Kenny Pickett or Kef Walker or Matt Corral should be going up to New York instead of guys from Ohio State or Alabama. It's kind of getting kind of getting lame, you know, every time we see a Ohio State or Alabama QB going to, you know, New York in December. Illinois, Minnesota, Illinois could, you know, potentially open things up the Big Ten West because Minnesota is first in the Big Ten West. I don't know how they're first in the Big Ten West because, remember, you know, Minnesota shouldn't even be ranked again. You know, that that's the first thing, you know. The second thing is that Minnesota has taken care of pretty much every other team, you know, except for, you know, teams like Iowa. They haven't played Iowa yet. You know, Illinois could play spoiler to P.J. Flex squad, you know, this Minnesota squad, you know, we haven't really talked, we haven't talked about them at all, you know, aside from their crazy loss to Bowling Green and, you know, week one against Ohio State. There's really, you know, again, there's really no reason for me to talk about this game. I do not, I honestly don't want to talk about it, but the committee ranked them at number 20, so I have to. Um, so again, Illinois could play spoiler here. You know, it, you never know what could happen in these games. You know, Illinois. You know, again, the Penn State win was inconceivable, and this could be another one for the fight in the line at Brett Bielema. 
Another game that I really should be talking about on here is Pitt Duke. And I do not know why Pitt is in this poll. Pitt doesn't have a win that makes any sense at all. But yet, K. Pickett and company should take care of business. I mean, if Wake Forest can beat up on Duke like that, then Pitt should be able to do the same thing. Keep their momentum flying high in the ACC Coastal, despite the setback to Miami. So, you know, it is what it is there with the noon slate, okay? You know, it is what it is. So how about that 3.30 Eastern time slot, baby? Not a lot here. Not a lot here, you know, you know that, that you could say is like, oh wow, this is going to be crazy. I'm joking with you, I'm joking. There's a lot of games here. There's a lot of big games here that need to be talked about. First one up is Idaho State, you know, BYU. BYU is number 15 off the strength of their, you know, Power 5 opponents that they played this year. You know, especially in the Pac-12, Baylor as well, and Virginia. Um, Idaho State should be an easy, easy victory for BYU. BYU can continue to go up in the polls, potentially into the top 10, you know, by these seasons end, and wind up in a New Year's Six Bowl game. You know, again, you know, but the Boise State loss was, in fact, crazy for them. It was a really crazy game, you know, that I watched. Yeah, I think I watched most, if not all of it, if I'm not mistaken. And, again, you know, BYU is a team that should be, you know, that, that, that really, you know, again, that Baylor game was a little bit rough for them, but the, but the Boise State game was even rougher. And, you know, BYU is going to have a good ceiling. They could have a good ceiling here if they, you know, continue to win and things start to go wrong in the top ten and be up. They will be at least number 14 potentially next week, maybe even higher. It depends. It really depends on how things go. Another bolded game here. Michigan State, Purdue. Michigan State is number three in the country with a bad passing defense. We're talking this pass defense can't do anything right. If you let Cade McNamara throw all over you last week, get ready for David Bell. Get ready for David Bell and O'Connell. You know, they continue, you know, continue the momentum. Purdue is just look at the play spoiler again. They did it against Iowa. They could do it again here. You'd never know what things could look like in this game. But if Michigan State has to get their pass defense under control, they have to get it under control. You know, Kenneth Walker, he can do all he wants, you know, against, you know, Purdue. But again, you know, Iowa didn't really run the ball well against Purdue at all. And that could be the same fate, you know, for Kenneth Walker. Could be the same fate. He's going to have to do very, very well. The whole team, you know, on offense, you know, I know Jalen Naylor might not be at this game. You know, he might, I think he's like either injured, I don't know what's going on with him. If I'm not mistaken, if I read the headline right. Um, but yeah, Michigan State has to play a complete game again. You know, they have not, despite what people may tell you, despite what, at least what the committee said, that they played a complete, you know, schedule. They did not play a complete season. They have struggled against Indiana. They probably should have lost at Michigan, but Michigan blew it, and, you know, they were in a tough one with Miami for a long while, like, Miami was in that game for a long time, you know, y'all, yeah, a lot of people probably don't remember that, but that Michigan State-Miami game was, you know, beautiful, beautiful collapse for Miami, a beautiful collapse for Miami, but there's no need to talk about that anymore, because it's, you know, way back, way back at the beginning of the season. Yeah, Michigan State cannot struggle here against Purdue. They can't struggle here. If you want to be number three, you want to solidify yourself as number three, keep it up. Keep up the good momentum, okay? So where is game day going? Oh, you know where they're going. Cincinnati, the number six team in the country. Oh, yes, Cincinnati is going to be angry. They are already angry about the ranking, and I am inclined to agree with them. Again, now, Cincinnati just needs to take care of business. Things aren't looking too good, both in front and behind them, though. But they need to take care of business against Tul Tulsa. Not Tulane. They already played Tulane. Tulsa. And this Tulsa team plays tough. They play tough. They really do play tough. They played Ohio State tough. 
you know, they played Oklahoma State always. They always seem to play the Oklahoma State tough. And you cannot again. I don't know why. I don't know why the committee likes to overlook. You know, Cincinnati and just say, oh well, they haven't beaten anybody. They haven't done anything. They haven't beaten anybody. Everybody hasn't beaten everybody. That doesn't make any sense, Gary Barta. You clown. God, get this guy off the committee, please. But Cincinnati, again, just take care of business. You'll be fine. Things are going to be fine for you. Just calm down. There's still a month to go. How about that Navy-Notre Dame old rivalry? Finally back. You know, ESPN did get the broadcast, you know, their Navy-Notre Dame game for the first time last year. But they'll get to do it in 2022. But this year, the game's going to be on, you know, the Notre Dame Broadcasting Network, NBC. And Notre Dame is just trying to keep continuing to find that cohesion that they built, you know, trying to get the running game back, you know, with Kyron Williams, Jack Cohn and company, or rather the rotating roster of quarterbacks, you know, continuing to find cohesion, you know, up-tempo and stuff like that. You know, again, Notre Dame has been looking really solid. That's why they're the number 10 team in the country. Again, solid wins, really solid wins in all honesty, you know. It's, there's, there's a top 25 win in there with Wisconsin, and there, and I believe I'll be talking about them in a couple of games moments here. Um, but again, Notre Dame, really, really solid team. They just need to keep it up. Triple option again is not going to be something that's going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. You know, every time we talk about Navy on these things, you know, it seems it seems like I have to keep reminding people. It seems a lot of people have to keep reminding people that Navy is not an easy opponent. You know, it's it's the option. It's the flex bone triple option. It's not easy to defend. You know. I don't know why people keep saying that it is. It's not. You know, Navy may be bad, but again, nothing wrong. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with Navy being really, really bad this year because, I mean, Marshall beat them up. You know, you know everybody else is pretty much beating them up. You know, and Memphis was the only team that had a close game with them. So, you know, Notre Dame just... You know, if they take care of business here, they'll be in pretty position. And again, they could be going to a big time low game as well. You know, at 11 and one. I mean, again, Notre Dame could take care of business, go 11 and one, and just fly in to a New Year's Six Bowl, fly into a big time bowl game. And I think they'd be happy about that. Oklahoma State, West Virginia. Now, this one is going to be interesting. I don't have this bolded for I don't know what reason, but Oklahoma State cannot overlook West Virginia. West Virginia has played Oklahoma pretty damn tough. Excuse me. Pretty damn tough. Pretty damn tough West Virginia team that after a bye has won two straight games, you know, including Iowa State and TCU. And with Neil Brown and getting Jared Day to finally get things going for the Mountaineers, you know, it could spell trouble. It could spell trouble for the Cowboys. The Cowboys, you know, again, they have a strong defense, you know, everything like that. But Oklahoma State, they cannot overlook anything that West Virginia is having for them. They cannot overlook anything that West Virginia can do, you know. Because, I mean, again, West Virginia's passing attack is always lethal. And, you know, West Virginia is just a team that you can't overlook now. You can't overlook this team now. How about the number 12 team in the country, Baylor? And going up against their old rival, TCU. And TCU doesn't have Gary Patterson anymore. In fact, Gary Patterson just resigns. You know, TCU was trying to fire him. You know, the admins and stuff, they were trying to fire him. They were, I mean, they were going to get, they were really going to get rid of him, you know, at some point. You know, they could have gotten rid of him at any time during the season. But Patterson said, I'm out deuces before the admins could get him because the admins apparently want change. You know, and again, TCU is just a solid, solid program. You know, they haven't had the best couple of years, past few years, but this is a solid, solid, you know, TCU team always. They always play tough. They always play tough. And Baylor, again, Baylor just has to keep the momentum going. You can't slip up here against TCU because Oklahoma is looming. You can't slip up here. And speaking of that Baylor Oklahoma game, hope either if that game's gonna be a big noon game, that's gonna be pretty it's gonna be pretty maddening for Oklahoma fans. Oklahoma is already mad that they're probably number eight. You know, 
or rather, they're probably already mad Oklahoma fans are. Those Oklahoma fans are probably mad at their number eight already, which is hilarious. But, again, Baylor, just take care of business. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. And then, honestly, the game of the week here, as we hit the 30-minute mark of this video, Auburn-Texas A&M, a top 15 matchup with Bo Nix and a tenacious Auburn defense going up against a tenacious Texas A&M defense with Zach Calzada finally coming into his own. This is going to be one hell of a matchup here, you know. And again, CBS has gotten really, really lucky this year with the way these games have been setting up, you know. Really, really lucky. So, I mean, again, I thought this was going to be another year where CBS just kind of coasts by because, I mean, the last couple of years, the SEC on CBS games have not been too particularly great, you know. You know, at least a lot of them. I know there's some classics in there, but, I mean, the last couple of years, it's been like, uh, okay. But, yeah, Auburn a and going to be a defensive slugfest, in my opinion. This is going to be a battle of these quarterbacks. Will Bo Nix and the Auburn Tigers continue to shine, continue to rise up in the polls? Because it seems like we're setting up for something with Auburn again. And again, I, I keep it, I'm going to imply it, you know, as many times as I need to remember when Auburn had two losses a couple years back, and they were even considered for the college football playoff at one point. Because they had, you know, Auburn had victories against, you know, Georgia and Alabama, I believe, that year. And Alabama and Georgia were like number one and number two, if I'm not mistaken, at one point. Yeah, Auburn could be creeping into the playoff hunt, it seems. And it seems like, you know, that number 13 position, it, it could mean something. It really could mean something, the way things have been playing out this year. Wisconsin Rutgers, on the other hand, I just don't know. I don't know why Wisconsin is ranked. Maybe it's to prop up Notre Dame. Maybe it's to prop up Michigan. I, I just don't know. I don't know why they're ranked. But the strategy that Wisconsin has used over the past few weeks, which is not having Graham Mertz have the ball too much. I mean, there was one game where he only threw eight passes, and I believe that was against Iowa, actually, you know, just last week that he threw, like, eight passes. So Wisconsin seemingly leaning on the running game to get things done. Mississippi State, Arkansas, on the other hand, I don't know why Mississippi State is ranked. I really don't. I think they're only here because of the top 20 wins against Kentucky and Texas A&M. But they have losses to Memphis, and again, that loss was controversial. We all remember that. And LSU, and that was more decisive. NC State, Florida State, on the other hand, also don't know why NC State is here. They don't really have anything, again, they don't really have any wins. You know, that make any sense, you know, that make any sense that say, oh, wait, oh, wow, this is the number 19 team in the country. There's, there's really no reason to rank NC State. There really isn't. They they lost to Miami along with it, it and NC State lost to Miami. You know, and Miami's pretty mediocre. You know, Miami's gotten better, but they're still Miami. Miami's not a good team this year. But Florida State ain't really a good team either. Florida State could play these these Wolfpack team pretty tough. You know, you still got Devin Leary, who's been playing pretty good this year. And, you know, NC State just got to win this game. You know, Wake Forest is indeed looming. So this could be a potential top 20 matchup that could be a, you know, a big game for, you know, Wake Forest soon down the line. We'll see. We'll see. Well, 7 Eastern. How about it? Boise State, number 23, Fresno State. You're looking at Jalen Cropper here for Fresno State. He's coming back, at, I believe, you know, because there were some injuries for Fresno State, you know, during and before the San Diego State game. And the real question here is Boise State's whole line. They haven't really held up well throughout the entire season. It did hold up well against BYU and maybe Oklahoma State, too, if I'm not mistaken. But Fresno State was able to get past San Diego State's line way too easily, you know, and again, Fresno State was tenacious in the San Diego State game. Fresno State has been tenacious pretty much all season. Uh, the only reason why I think Fresno State is ranked is to prop up Oregon. That's really the only reason why, because Fresno State lost to Hawaii, and we'll talk about Hawaii in a moment here, because, again, Hawaii's got a dangerous passing attack, you know, and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, 
it should be an interesting one here. I don't, I don't really have a lot to say about it because, I mean, there's just not a lot here. Tennessee, Kentucky, on the other hand, you know, you got Will Levis, and you got this, you know, Kentucky team that has lost two straight games to Mississippi State and Georgia, respectively, though. And it's not going to be easy. This one isn't going to be easy for Kentucky, you know. Josh Heupel and Hendon Hooker, you know, this Tennessee team is improving, improving each and every week. You know, they've had, you know, some tough losses Tennessee has this year, especially the Ole Miss loss. That one was pretty tough. And they, and I mean, Kentucky could have a third straight loss like, like that. They could have a third straight loss just like that if Tennessee comes in to Lexington, takes them down because, I mean, Kentucky plays very, they don't play, you know, the fastest offense. Tennessee plays fast. So, Kentucky has to slow down this Tennessee team. They have to slow down this Tennessee offense. Tennessee's not, they don't have the greatest defense, though. So, you know, Kentucky has to start exploiting that, you know, exploiting that, the fact that these, you know, some of these other SEC teams don't have the greatest defenses, you know, because, I mean, Kentucky's been keeping it real close, you know, at times this year. How about Iowa Northwestern? There's another team with a bad run defense. That is Northwestern. Northwestern's run defense is atrocious. So what does Iowa need to do here? You know, the Iowa's trailing right now in the Big Ten West, you know, with two straight losses. I mean, two straight big-time losses where they've gotten blown out twice. Iowa needs to run the ball. They need to run the ball here. You know, I know a lot of people are tired of Kirk and Brian Ferentz, but... You know, it is what it is here with Iowa. You know, they got to get something going if they want to win the Big Ten West. they got to get something going. There's, no, there's, there's nothing that you could really say about Iowa, you know, that hasn't been said already. O-line's not good. Offense isn't good. Defense is great. But, you know, defense, you know, can't win you everything, obviously. And, I mean, Iowa just doesn't have an offense at all. So what about LSU Alabama, though? What about LSU Alabama? Alabama is number two. Again, this doesn't make a lot of sense to have them at number two. You know, again, the Ole Miss win is, you know, that that does work out in their favor. Mississippi State also works out in their favor, but they lost to Texas A&M, and you know that's that's about it. You know, I mean Mississippi State is solid, but that that's not really a win you want to be proud of. You know, because Mississippi State's not. You know, not the team that you want to trust, you know, despite the fact that Mississippi State has like three top 20 wins, excuse me, not two, three top 20 wins, you know, because, I mean, Mississippi State's pretty inconsistent. So, you know, but Alabama, you know, they should take care of business here if they could take care of business here because, I mean, again, Alabama, I don't trust them being the number two team. I'm not sold on them. They don't. Yeah, and I know people are going to be like, oh, well, they have the defense now. No, they don't. No, they don't. Stop lying to yourself. Stop lying to yourself. You know, you still don't give up 300 pounds. I'll, I'll keep saying it until I need to say it. You don't, you don't get ran all over by a mediocre Florida team. You don't, you, you don't let Tennessee hang around with your three and a half quarters. You don't let Mississippi State, despite blowing them out by 40 points, throw for 300 yards on you. The things are not adding up here. Alabama really doesn't deserve to be a number two. And I know people are going to point to Texas A&M. Oh, well, well, Texas A&M wasn't good at the time. They're on. They were unranked. And Texas A&M has reeled off, you know, victory after victory after the Alabama game have, have continued to improve. They're improving. That A&M could even win the West potentially. You know, but depended on thing how things go in this game with Auburn. But Alabama, Alabama needs to win this game. Alabama cannot let Max Johnson throw it all over the field. I mean, with all the stuff going on with LSU, I mean, Miles Brennan said, I'm out. I'm transferring somewhere else. Ed Ogeron, out as head coach. You know, things are, things have to, you know, they, Bryce Young and company have to solidify that 29-point spread. That 29-point spread that, you know, you know, I personally don't buy it because it's a big rivalry game, you know. I mean, it is what it is, you know. Betters are betters. And how about Indiana, Michigan, 
you know, Indiana's just, they just went through the gauntlet this year. Like, this team is battered. There's no Michael Penix anymore. There's no reason to get excited. Why is this game a night game in November for the Big Ten? It's, this could be another blowout. Because Michigan is really, really upset after losing, blowing the game last week against Michigan State. And Iowa, I mean, I mean not Iowa, Indiana. Indiana could play Michigan tough, though. They could play Michigan really, really tough. Well, just like they played Michigan State. They could play Indiana. Or rather, Indiana could play Michigan really tough. That's the things up here. But the second-to-last bolded game here, or rather, yeah, yeah, this is the second-to-last bolded game, so this is number five. My number five game of the week is Oregon and Washington. Oregon, style points matter. You're number four in the country, and, you know, Jimmy Lake has been talking a lot of stuff off the field. He really had stuff to say that Oregon's recruiting just ain't there with Washington. They, they, they're not worthy. And the Ducks, you know, I tend to not talk about Vegas spreads, but this one's interesting because the Ducks are only a touchdown favorite, if I'm not mistaken, and they cannot afford another game like California to happen to them, where they, it was close and Oregon could have lost the game, you know, with the end. You know, Washington hasn't looked really good this year at all. You know, in fact, they got, they got blasted by Michigan. They lost to Montana, you know. I mean, Washington just has been really good this year. And the fact that Jimmy Lake had to say this stuff is, is proving my point here. Proving my point, this is going to be a thriller somehow, in some way. You know, because of what Jimmy Lake said. This is going to be interesting to see because Washington could mess this up, you know, in more ways than one. They could mess it up for themselves, or they can mess up Oregon's chances to get to the college football playoff. That's really simple. And, again, with the way Oregon's been playing, you know, Colorado went aside. They've been struggling. They've been struggling. Colorado is bad. We know that. They, they do not have an offense to save their life. And their defense got torched, you know, despite the fact that Colorado was, you know, playing Texas a and super tough early in the season. But that doesn't matter now, you know. Oregon has to win this game easily if they want to be number four next week, or even higher, potentially. And it's 10 Eastern time. How about it? The undefeated UTSA Roadrunners looking to Cynthia McCormick and Frank Harris to lead the way for these Roadrunners. You know, unbeaten Roadrunners team. I know there's other games. I want to I wanna really quick mention out to these other couple of games here, you know, real quick. Um, just, just to get, just to get them out the way here, um, you know. He, let me, let me pause here for a second. Okay, special shout outs to Georgia State, Louisiana. That one's going to be interesting. SMU, Memphis. Again, Memphis. You know, this is the Memphis team that beat Mississippi State, but yet lost to UTSA. Hasn't really looked too good all season. Yada yada yada. Penn State, Maryland. You know, Penn State, obviously not ranked at all. Coastal Carolina against Georgia Southern. You know, that also is a game that is happening. You know, and Houston, South Florida, that is also a game that is happening. So those other games that I've spoken of, you know, featuring teams that are not ranked by the College Football Playoff Committee, they, they're there. They're there. You know, I, I mentioned them, you know, just so you know. But UTSA UTEP should be a fun one. This game got elevated from ESPN Plus all the way up to ESPN 2, 9.15 Eastern start time, 8 Central time. It's like a, I think, it, no wait, yeah, no wait, Mount, no, I forgot, UTEP is on the mountain time zone, so it's like 8.15 there. They've had some 8.15 starts in the past, and Jeff Trailer. UTSA's head coach just signed a 10-year, $28 million contract. We'll see how long he stays with UTSA, though. Because, I mean, the way... I'm going to finally get to see... I'm going to finally get to see how this UTSA team plays on Saturday night. And to complement that is San Diego State, Hawaii. Now, Hawaii, again, is just... I mean, again, I think San Diego State's only here in the poll, probably to prop up Fresno State 
probably because also they have, you know, the Pac-12 victories as well, you know, but Hawaii, a tricky, tricky bunch, and San Diego State just has no offense at all. They have a defense, but that's it. No offense to speak of. You can't trust Lucas Johnson with anything. You know, he hasn't done anything all season. You know, you, you, you know in, in, at least in these couple of games that he's played. And the backs haven't really been doing too much. I know I mentioned, you know, the bevy of backs that San Diego State has, but they haven't been doing anything at all. And I know this video is hella long, so, you know, I'm going to wrap it up here. Tell you, oh, you know, man. I want to thank Citizen Arcane for, you know, first off for the Ko-Fi donation. You know, I really appreciate that. Uh, thank you, buddy. I did the pre I did. I mean, not. Uh, I would. I would say. I'm messing up my words here, man. I'm messing up my words because for, that's the first ever donation that I've gotten on Ko-Fi, and you know, I didn't expect that at all. You know, you know again, I, I, mean, I only use Ko-Fi to, you know. Tr just try and get some extra money in. So I mean, I don't, I don't have a lot of money. I don't have a lot of money to upgrade my stuff right now. You know, I think I've said that millions of times on this channel. And I'm glad that there's a uh, another subscriber to the channel too. You know, there's 149 subscribers, so you know, not quite 150 just yet. Maybe we can get to 200. You know, at some point, I'm, I'm really, I'd really be happy about that. I don't know. You know, because college basketball is right around the corner and stuff like that. But I'll talk about that stuff later in the week. And, you know, just to wrap this up here, it's going to be another great week of college football. I can tell you that right now. Do I watch anything on Thursday night? Probably not. I mean, again, Louisiana, unfortunately, didn't get ranked by the committee. You know, it is what it is there, so I'm just not going to watch that game. We're going to, I'm going to move on to Saturday, probably. Move on to a good, good Saturday slate of games here. Uh, again, the six games that I did mention in this video are, you know, that are going to be big. Again, UTSA, UTEP, that is a big one for UTSA. I wanted to highlight UTSA because, I mean, again, what a great program that is being built out in San Antonio. I'm glad that they got, you know, they got to the American because, I mean, again, the team is having a lot of upside. Again, Oregon, Washington should be fun. Auburn Texas A&M, obviously the game of the week. Michigan State Purdue, another tricky one. You know, Ohio State Nebraska and Wake Forest North Carolina are also two interesting ones to keep an eye on as well. You know, so that's it. That's all I gotta say. Just to wrap this up and everything like that. I will see you all in a couple days when we talk about the next week in the NFL season. I believe it will be week nine, so we'll be halfway through the NFL season. So with that being said, everybody, I know this took like an hour, but that'll that'll do it. Good night, everybody. Have a good night. Good Tuesday night.